All right, everybody. Thank you for joining Ingram Micro's Server Explained, powered by Intel Xeon. Again, as Devlin and I like to say, that is about the shortest title in the industry. Uh, you can find us at serverexplained.com. So I'm really excited today. Uh, Devlin is, is here uh, uh, again with me, so co-hosting, but I've got two Microsoft teammates of mine. We've got Matt Crum and Carter Wilson. They are subject matter experts on Windows Server. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about on-prem and some really cool differentiated technology that we're starting to see emerge there. And then we're gonna to start to creep up in the cloud and talk a little bit around, uh, around hybrid. So Matt Carter, thanks for, for joining us. Again, Devlin yeah. and I are, are sales guys, so we're gonna try and keep it simple, right? We made some jokes about that before we started recording, it's probably best. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk to you guys a little bit around what's exciting around server and then how you know the latest Intel technology really works for the resellers data ton of value. So maybe to kick it off really quickly, Windows Server 2019 data center, some differentiated technology, people talk about HCI, hyper-converged infrastructure, a little bit more layman's terms or for our resellers, what are they getting out of HCI? What is the added benefit? What do, what do they need to know? I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there. So, you know, we really have two options now. And I know we, we, we said earlier, we'll, we'll jump into hybrid, but we might as well go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, kill that uh, bird right now. And, and you've heard of HCI, you've heard of hyper-converged infrastructure. And with Windows Server 2019 data center, we offered up some technologies uh, that allowed us to do that. Storage space is direct, software-defined networking, uh, et cetera, to help us create that hyper-converged cluster. Well, last year, late in the year, we released a new product that is uh, you know, available to you from Azure called Azure Stack HCI. It is a separate OS, but still has the same technology that allowed us to create hyper-converged infrastructure previously. So still storage space is direct, Hyper-V, software-defined networking, still running on-prem, but allows me to separate out, if you will, the, the, the Windows Server workload piece. So it's truly just a, a, a hyper-converged um, you know, operating system. Uh, a lot of benefits uh, to both. Uh, you know, again, I talked about those technologies, taking advantage of running that on Intel platforms. Uh, you know, a lot of great stuff uh, to, to help out businesses. Carter, uh, you want to add anything? Sure. So when you look at the hyper-converged landscape and, and kind of the, like Matt mentioned, the, the two paths to get there is, is, is first to kind of understand the customer point of view. W you know, what's their, what's their propensity to look at cloud solutions versus on-prem solutions that yeah. really kind of drives that behavior? Mm -hmm. uh, if they're a traditional on-premise environment, then the server data center features provide all the functionality they need. If they are an Azure subscriber today, then then looking at the Azure-based solution might make more sense. But you know, at its at its heart, it, you know, it is still an on-prem investment. Right. You know, leveraging the latest and greatest technologies such as you know Intel Optane Persistent Memory uh, can be used as a storage class memory module inside our hyperconverged clusters. So you know, you get the most performance from that tier because that's automatically allocated toward caching for higher performance. And then, you know, you can leverage additional technologies on the back end for our capacity tiers. Even do a, a multi-tiered storage solution inside the clusters, really, you know, de decide how you want to define that storage. Right. So, you know, the solutions, either either flavor really provide the most the most benefit and and performance compared to all of our other competitors in the marketplace we we can outperform you know any of the competitors at a, at a honestly at a, at a reduced price simply because we don't have a lot of the additional overhead and, and licensing things because data center includes all those features so yeah uh, you know customers really have a it's a it's a you know broad um choice to choose from when they look at how they want to deploy this this technology Cool, and, and so you mentioned hardware partners obviously are, are at the core of this, aside from Silicon, mm -hmm. just a, being, being a key part of it. Azure Stack HCI versus just deploying Windows Server HCI functionality, is there a difference in, in hardware requirements? Like, no, no? You, basically you're gonna run on the same hardware certified solution on either side? Yes, that's right. So yeah. our, 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 we have a criteria to meet to become what's called a, a certified node or, or a validated configuration. So we, you know, all of our hardware manufacturers, you know, up, you know, apply to be a, have a certified list, and all the major manufacturers all have form multiple form factors, you know, server sizes, capacities to be 
on that list. So we really provide the, the you know, just a, a multitude of choice on how they want to deploy it. You know, with Windows Server, though, you have to be careful that, that it can be a, um, we'll call it a DIY approach to things. Some some server administrators like to buy some off-the-shelf stuff and throw on a Windows Server role and, and, and you know, think that everything's going to work. And, and sometimes you get lucky and that works, but then there are cases where there are some issues that can arise. So we really rely on our hardware partners to to provide those certified lists and they all have them listed on their websites, on their, on, you know, all their HCI pages on what's a supported configuration. So. Hey, you, know, you bring up a good point that, you know, we, we talk about that certified list, you know, there are certain performance benchmarks that our manufacturers, mu partners must hit, right? If we, you know, we talk about the benefit of all that Intel technology, but if we're not hitting those benchmarks, it kind of goes out the window. So that's a, that's a great point that right. that DIY approaches may not always be the best from a performance standpoint. Mm -hmm. And the best resource that we probably have is is actually our, our channel partners like Ingram Micro, right? Like yeah. existing resources from the HP, Lenovo, and Dell teams all available to support, you know, making sure that they get the best configuration available, right? Yeah. Yes. Good. And you guys, you'd mentioned uh, Intel Optane a moment ago and how that can improve your overall throughput. Um, can you expand on that a little bit? Because I, I, you know, Intel Optane is still one of the best kept secrets within Intel. Um, and, and, and it's a little complicated. I, I, I get that because it can either be a storage device or, or memory, depending on how it's, uh, implemented. Right. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a whole new memory architecture. It's, it's not NAND, right? Like you have in typical SSDs, it's not DRAM like you would have in memory. It's, 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 it's based on 3D crosspoint, which sort of sits right between those two so mm -hmm. maybe you know if you could just expand a little bit about how you're seeing it implemented in this particular environment well when you deploy an hci cluster the the this the application itself or the operating system itself is going to look at the storage across across the board and technically speaking you don't have to have any you could have four spinning disks and that's all you would need and you would there wouldn't be much performance in that maybe we're looking at a long-term archive or some mm -hmm. robo type solution mm -hmm. and so when you add multiple drive you know form factors into into the server itself it it grabs the fastest performing drive and automatically moves that to the cache tier when you've got you know at, when you got pers obtain persistent memory in the server it's there is no option it's going to grab that and allocate that directly toward that caching and so when we design an HCI solution, there's there's some relations required, you know, such as a number of capacity, you know, cache drives to capacity, typically like one to four or one to two, you know, basically one cache for every two storage drives. And so when you configure the servers from a, you know, the configuration perspective, it's, it's important to understand that. So if I've got eight drives in my capacity tier, I need, you know, at a minimum, you know, if I did one for every four drives, I would need two drives allocated to cache, so I would put two persistent memory DIMMs in, in the server to, to meet that need, or I can b b boost that up based on, on my performance expectations. And so we have, we have some calculators uh, that, are, that are published on Azure that kind of walk through that, like how to size, how to, how to configure caching versus capacity, and getting into my drive resiliency, and what sort of um, Reed Solomon erasure coding algorithms do I want to apply uh, to, to maximize that performance versus per, you know capacity expectation. So uh, from from the Optane persistent memory, it's it's going to be allocated to that cache tier simply based on the on because it's the fastest drive in in the chassis, even though it's a memory stick, right? right. So we can take advantage of that. Well, and and two, you know, it's it's I think it goes a little bit even beyond what you talked about, Carter, because. It's not. It's yeah. Yes, it's it's the fastest out there. It, it it makes things you know from a storage perspective run faster. But let's we, we can exp we can run more VMs per node because of that caching, yeah. right? We're, we're right. reducing the the need for that physical memory because now we can take advantage of that uh, the Optane SSD sure. to be that memory for us. So yeah, that's another great uh, uh, reason that uh, you're using the the Optane uh, PMEM with it is is just a you know we can increase bandwidth, increase memory, and just really get the fastest you know, deployment we can. Mm -hmm. And Devlin, I, this is a pretty accessible price point. 
on that no, scale, that's right? Like, what, Relatively like that's, speaking, yeah. Compared to what you would pay for, you know, 10x the amount of of um, SSD drive, a high performance enterprise SSD drive, optimizing, you know, smaller drives potentially with with Optane memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no comparison. Uh, mm-hmm. 512 gigs of of Optane can make a massive difference to the overall performance of your system, and right. you know, that comes in under 600 bucks. That's awesome. Yeah, and, really and we're seeing configurations just, getting collapsed, right? Yeah. Like we're that previously, was the point you I was need a make too. Yeah, yeah, dedicated hardware, and suddenly you're going into like a JBOD, but uh, you know, put in uh, put it in as the, as the cache, and then you've got massive IOPS improvements. Mm-hmm. I mean, it truly takes the 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 term hyper converge to the next level because we're <laughs> we're talking about. Right. You know, I can truly do this on a two-node cluster. What I what used to take me six, seven, eight physical servers. It's right. pretty amazing. Now, guys, this sounds complex. Whether I'm setting up HCI, or you know, I'm I'm talking about Azure Stack HCI, or or I'm looking at hybrid workloads. Like this sounds sounds pretty difficult. Do I need to be a PowerShell wizard? To implement a lot of this, like what's what, what's the management and solution in there? Like what 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 do we have? Right? It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to know about PowerShell, but you don't have to be at all. Okay. Uh, you know, our Windows Admin Center is is, is our single pane of glass management solution uh, that supports all all Windows Server deployments. And with our latest build, the twenty one oh three, I believe, uh, you know, it adds adds additional you know improvements to our um, Plugins and and uh, snap-in utilities, and so with the when we announced the operating system, we created a a cluster creation utility that drives the the entire cluster creation. So I all I simply have to do is add these servers to my domain, I go into Windows Admin Center, create the cluster. I I point to the servers, then I allocate the networking for management tiers, and I create like you know uh, virtual networks inside this for the east-west traffic. And then when I get into storage, that's when it simply grabs that uh, that, that PMEM, allocates that to cache, and then I create my storage pools based mm-hmm. off of that. None of that requires PowerShell, but it's it's good to understand it a little bit, I would say. And and, and what's the best part about Admin Center? Right? Oh, it's free. It's free, it's, right? Yes. And and, and free. it's it's beyond just managing. You know, we're talking about hyperconverged. Beyond just managing your Windows servers, it's your your entire Windows 10 infrastructure as right. well. So again, like Carter said, single pane of glass. It's free, browser based. I don't have to install any agents. Right. Uh, it really makes it very easy to use for, for and uh, administrators. On top of that, our hardware partners have all created their own extensible plugins to take advantage of this. So uh, HPE has uh, plugins for um, the server management. So you can get in and see the life cycle of the server itself. Dell right. has their OME integration directly into it. HP has the X Clarity integrator. So from a server administrator's perspective, I can log into Windows Admin Center and do everything I possibly would ever want to do for those servers. Create virtual machines, create virtual networks, you know, learn PowerShell scripting for if you wanted to. Right. And then even look at the look at the physical attributes of the servers and see right. how my, you know, with system insights, I can see how how I'm performing, how my processors are performing, and my memory's performing over time. I can then create, you know, scripts and run books inside there to move virtual workloads on Sunday nights over to host two. So host one doesn't get overwhelmed and I can create that truly dynamic fluid data center all through this utility. That's and not amazing. to mention that's all we have. That's also how we you know, bridge up to the cloud too, right? right? So when we, mm-hmm. if we want to talk about hybrid, Windows Admin Center is the same tool that lets me to, maybe you don't want to move it over to another node. Maybe you need to move that workload up to the cloud. Uh, that's you know very easy to do with the Windows Admin Center. Right. Very cool. So so far I've heard if you're a reseller, make sure you you, you look at Optane as an immediate potential performance increase, Absolutely. right? On on your new configuration. And then if you're not using Windows Admin Center, you're probably missing out on on you you're know. making it too complicated. Yeah, I, I like that. Good. I mean, go back to PowerShell if you don't use Windows Admin Center. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, no, I'll I'll take a GUI over over PowerShell any, oh, it, any day of the week. It's right? so much easier. It, if you ever tried to deploy, you know, I'll call it Storage Spaces Direct and Server 2016 was all PowerShell driven. Uh, with with Windows Admin Center, it put a UI in front of it, and you know, you can even manage uh, just Core OS implementations. So. 
you know, we got a Hyper-V server running nothing but the Windows Server core install. I can plug that into Windows Admin Center and get the same functionality as I would if I was logging into the desktop. So there's no there's there's no trade off dependent on you know the operating system you want to deploy, which makes it nice. That's awesome. Now, Matt, you you mentioned hybrid, and was, I just kind of said we we're going to cover that. And and That's Windows good. Admin Center is is your portal for your on premise server to go there. Now, we are the OEM team. Uh, the, the three of us in Devlin also supports on-premise and, and infrastructure hardware. So we don't necessarily look to fully take our workloads up into Azure. But sure. if we are partners with HP, Lenovo, and Dell, and the reseller is interested in selling on-premise infrastructure, like what's the workloads that they should be looking at to start to introduce hybrid? Like, let's say the customer says, I want to be in the cloud, but they're not sure what that means. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. customers mm-hmm. just want to start their cloud journey. What workloads should they look at? You know, what can we use Windows Admin Center for? Sure. So anything that, you know, that I first jumps out of me is anything that requires, you know, highly intensive reads and writes. So maybe there's a, a SQL database script that needs to run, you know, once a week, right? And instead of increasing the amount of hardware I have, I can just, you know, maybe move that workload up to the cloud for that. But maybe it's even simpler. Maybe it's things like backups or, uh, disaster recovery with things like Azure Site Recovery. Those are just a couple of key areas that you know end users can take advantage of, of in the cloud, but without having to, you know, you know. Gosh, I remember the the old days where if I wanted to back up my data, I had an old tape drive that would take, you know, it would run overnight, and hopefully my backup didn't fail. So that if I had to recover the next day, uh, you know, it would be there. But now I can do that up in the cloud, or maybe it's just migrating data taking advantage mm-hmm. of uh, you know Azure to migrate data from one server to another, from one site to another, uh, without having to you know do that physical copy uh, in the background. Uh, a lot of, lot of lot of great ways to take advantage of the cloud with actually moving everything into the cloud. Right. And, and you know the other thing is a lot of companies probably have that that experience today if they're running like Azure Active Directory. So doing mm-hmm. Active Directory synchronization up to the cloud for a single sign-on, maybe for you know app dev purposes or something. So a lot of them may already be kind of dabbling in that a little bit. Uh, you know, Windows Admin Center makes the plugins uh, very easy to 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 deploy at scale. So yeah, and, and I'll just add too. You know, the fact that it's hybrid means I can do it on an as-needed basis. I'm not tied mm-hmm. into any type of long-term you know agreement, whatever it may be. It's just hey, you know, I, I got this workload I need to run. I'm going to do it up in Azure instead of running it on-prem. I, right. I think that's just a, a great benefit. Yeah, I love that. You know, if if you just need a little extra storage mm-hmm. networking, like whatever the case is, then it's there, and Windows Admin kind of kind of connects it in there. So that's really exciting. Yeah. And the other the, piece, uh, one, I mean, one last point, yeah. kind of in the app dev space, is developers can now develop apps that live in Azure but talk to resources in an on-prem state. So Matt mentioned SQL. If I create a a a, a a SQL query utility up in Azure, but my SQL database is on, you know, a 10 terabyte server in my data center that's simply too cost effective to move to a cloud solution. I can leave it there and then I can point to it using my Azure based application. So, I, so you really do get the best of both worlds in that perspective. That's awesome. And, and I think that ties in really well to what I was going to say, which is more of a sales angle. So for the resellers, the opportunity with Azure is you can get an ongoing consumption or subscription motion with your customer. So mm-hmm. rather than having that, that, you know, we always talk about this one right on the client side, rather than just having that CapEx, you now have an ongoing OpEx experience with that customer. If you're doing right. any kind of services, Windows Admin Center allows you to manage the health of that. And there comes a point when you're looking at somebody who's running a 2012 server on, on some, you know, four generation old server that's really due, or, you know, heaven forbid you find a Windows Server 2008 workload, or, you know, like, you like, get rid of that, right? So, so that's right. an opportunity. Try and build in a little bit of that Azure scripting, and then, you, you know, you just build your, your managed service practice on top of that because you've got a really clear revenue stream and a requirement for, for your customer to kind of keep on checking in with you. Right. And, and you know, to that point, Kirk, I mean, I know a lot of resellers who fit that profile that are running five-year-old, six-year-old servers, um, and, and there's this whole idea, well, if it, it, you know, it still runs, it's, it's good enough, but, 
you owe it to yourself to look at third generation Xeon based platforms at this point because there's such a dramatic difference, not just in overall performance, but it really is designed with with cloud optimization in mind. It allows yeah. you to run more VMs and in a far more efficient and secure way than that than that older system that you're running today. So, you know, reach out to your Ingram account team, start talking about potentially system migration with HP, with Lenovo, with whomever, um, with with the third gen. I mean, it's still early days and the products are still rolling out, but it it really is. <clears throat> dramatically different from a uh, second generation Xeon. I love that. Total cost of ownership could be a big consideration Absolutely. in your refresh. I think no the question. other exciting thing, storage space is direct and the, uh, the other capabilities within our, our data center edition really kind of shrink the footprint in the data center too. Right mm -hmm. before you, you would take an entire stack. Now, you know, if you're doing coloc, maybe you're only taking half a stack. Maybe you're only cooling half a stack, consuming there that amount go. of power. Energy, right. And, right. And and Devlin, you're you're bringing more more efficient horsepower with with Intel's latest generation. I think that's that's the real equation that that the resellers need to need to kick in. And again, uh, you know, Ingram's Ingram's a great partner, and that's why they're they're supporting us with with Server Explained. So I think that's a, an opportunity. If you want to talk refresh, reach out to your Ingram rep and make sure that they understand you know what you're looking for and how they can support you. Gentlemen, I, I think we pretty much ran the gambit. Did anything else you want to you want to throw out there? Any any final words, Carter and Matt? I was going to add. You know, you, you brought up a good point. There are a lot of old servers out there. I think Devlin said it. You know, a lot of you know, there's those six, seven year old. We, we've seen them even older because mm -hmm. because even ten years ago, servers were more efficient than they were ten years previous to that. Um, you know, they sit in a closet in a lot of places and yeah. they just sit there and consume you know energy. Um, things are and so this, much more this, efficient. Yeah, go ahead. This idea, sorry, this idea of good enough computing. I mean, it's the bane of our existence, and, <laughs> right. and, and it, it just it it just isn't. You have to look at what's available today. You're right. It might have been better than the 20 year old system you had. Um, so you, you know, you refreshed 10 years ago, but you really owe it to yourself to look at what's 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 out today because you're right. We are optimizing for a whole new workload and a whole new set of priorities than were even thought of 10 years ago when those systems were developed. And, and I think it goes beyond that. And we could have a whole other discussion about this, but security, right? right. Think about, I mean, the, the, just the security enhancements we've seen over the last 10 years, both from a physical hardware and an OS perspective. So yep. if those, if I mean, those we old were servers so were so sensitive yeah. to that at Intel, I mean, right. oh, sure. we've taken a lot of those uh, mm -hmm. security uh, elements out of software and brought them right into right, uh, right into the platform, right into the hardware. Right. Um, to, to, so yeah, that's a good point. And, I mean, and, I, I and that can that, really ruin your day. I say that a lot of the innovations in security were written in blood, meaning something bad happened to get this sort of yeah. um, shift. And so with 2019 and even Windows Server 2022, we've seen such a focus on security. Uh, everything is driving toward a, a more secure work environment. And if you're buying new hardware with third generation, you know, Intel Xeon processors and Octane persistent memory and you name it, and you're putting a 10 year old operating system that wasn't written when those products were even, you know, thought of, you're handicapping the server from the get go. Correct. Yep. So yeah. it's, so we work very closely with Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, you buy know, we're working on the old gas in. You know, we're working really closely with right. you guys to, yeah, to optimize right. mm -hmm. the features within the CPU and in your software. It's 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 hand in glove. Right. Yeah. Love it. So again, we've got Intel Optane Persistent Memory Gen 3 Xeon Windows Server 2019 data center for now uh, with HCI and then Windows Admin Center really bringing it all together to manage your entire ecosystem for whatever you're going to do, but look into that. If you need support, Ingram team is, is obviously here, so they've got resources on each of the lines. We've got Intel resources, Microsoft resources, Azure cloud resources. So you have the capability really to build a very cool solution for your customers and, and show them total cost of ownership, like additional value prop. Like there's so much wrapped Real up value. in the solution that we can, yeah. we can really land. You know, we just we just need you, the reseller community, to, to kind of lean in and, and embrace some of this and, and listen to some of the other sessions where we've got some of our great hardware partners coming in and telling you what they're all about. Uh, and they'll point you in the right direction for what specific capacity is a solution that they have that you can offer up. 
So, gentlemen, I, th I think we're at time. Thanks a lot for, for joining us. I really uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for having us. All right, everybody. Yeah, so, sure. awesome. Thanks. So, so, thanks for joining into Server Explained on serverexplained.com. And this has been Windows Server Explained, powered by Intel Xeon. <laughs>